Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, HubSpot for Associations, Increasing Member Engagement. My name is Chris Jorgensen, and I'm the Director of Marketing here at Unleashed Technologies. For those of you who do not know us already, Unleashed Technologies has been dedicated to creating award-winning websites and digital experiences for our clients since 2007. As a silver partner with HubSpot, we also help our association clients with their digital marketing and marketing automation efforts. Today, we're joined by our partner HubSpot. With over 56,000 total customers in more than 100 countries, HubSpot offers award-winning software, services, and support to transform the way your association attracts, engages, and delights members. At this time, I'll be turning things over to Chris Ford, Director of Growth here at Unleashed Technologies, and Kevin Linehan, Channel Account Manager at HubSpot. Chris and Kevin, take it away. Hello. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, this is again, uh, this is Chris Foran, Director of Growth and Unleashed Technologies, along with our special guest and co-host, Kevin Linehan, with the agency partner team at HubSpot. Hello, Kevin. Hi, Chris. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me today. Excellent. Really appreciate you joining us. Wanted to um, jump right into our agenda here, have a, a, a lot of really interesting content to cover here as it relates to how HubSpot uh, how associations can use HubSpot, uh, but for the sake of the agenda, wanted to quickly reiterate that today we're going to cover how associations can use HubSpot to grow their member organizations, uh, a quick overview of HubSpot, you know, perhaps why take on an inbound marketing strategy if, if you haven't already, uh, why listen to us, you know, a little bit of background on Unleashed Technologies, our experience with both associations and HubSpot, and maybe why our opinion matters in all of this. And then we're going to do a very high level introduction to the HubSpot growth suite, the software itself, for those who may not know what is available in HubSpot. And then we're going to try to make it really relevant for you. Um, really, the meat of this conversation is overcoming a top association growth challenges with HubSpot and, and really perhaps dig into the tactical side of things on how to deliver more personalized member experience with HubSpot and HubSpot Connect, which is the integrated uh, application suite. And then also things perhaps like how to use email workflows and sequences to improve renewal processes, improve, uh, increase member renewal rates. And then lastly, how associations might be able to introduce and leverage conversational marketing into HubSpot, uh, perhaps using chatbots and some of these other things as it relates to a very hot topic conversational marketing and we'll leave some time for question and answers at the end so without further ado i wanted to jump right into things and um obviously we have kevin here who's going to be the the expert on hubspot for the sake of today's conversation i'm gonna i'm gonna leave the conversation really call in kevin to validate you know some of the things that we're doing seeing and hearing and just leverage his expertise as it relates to you know, having worked at HubSpot for, for several years and seen tremendous growth for all types of organizations, especially associations. So for those of you who might be encountering HubSpot for the first time, HubSpot is an inbound marketing sales and services software that helps companies attract visitors, convert leads, and close customers. So the little segue into what it is for associations, HubSpot is inbound marketing sales and service software that can help associations attract pr prospective members, convert them into leads, and perhaps new members of your organization. Now, we're going to take the association member perspective or view today, but we realize that a lot of associations are looking to do other things such as increase advocacy, advocacy or also do fundraising. So, a lot of this is going to be around the, the attracting and engaging new members, but there are also those other benefits to achieve those other goals. So real quick, inbound for associations in a nutshell. So here we have the, the premise of inbound marketing. Uh, I invite Kevin to chime in at any point with, with the uh, the official inbound marketing approach, but for the sake of today's conversation, we're looking to attract, convert, and delight. So uh, what that means is from an attract standpoint, use content, blogs, eBooks, videos, convert, convert traffic by offering value, 
in different ways, whether you're driving someone through a landing page or using clear call to action to get someone to download a white paper. How can you convert a lead or someone who is just traffic into a prospective member or a prospective donor to your organization? And then lastly, delight. Turn prospects into delighted members and really use data to personalize not only the process of them becoming members, but adding value on an ongoing basis. Using data to understand what your members want, how they're going to extract value from the organization as a whole. Why inbound, would you say? Essentially because traditional marketing is broken. Broken. You have to take a different approach. The old approach where you're going to push your agenda on someone or interrupt their day to get them to look at you or engage with you is it doesn't work anymore. You know, the, these prime examples here, 200 million numbers on the do not call list. You're not cold calling them. 44% of direct mail is never open. That's, that approach isn't going to work by and large. And then 86% of people skip TV and commercials. So this inbound approach is, is the new way uh, or recognizes the new way that people consume information and are engaging with associations and organizations like yours Let's talk about some strategies and how, how to help you um, participate in this. And, and really, a real big change that I think goes hands in hand with this, especially for member-driven organizations, is the change in consumer behavior and expectations. So as member organizations who are primarily delivering your services and your value online, you, you know, you're competing with the Amazons, the Netflix, and the Facebooks of the world. These same prospective members or members of your organization are getting spoiled by these extremely personalized, on-demand, and interconnected experiences that they're having with these other organizations. So you have this really competing for their, their attention and you're, you're competing for their uh, expectations, which are looking for the same personalized seamless, seamless experiences. So before I um, move on and, and talk a little bit about Unleashed Technologies, I just wanted to, to back up for a moment and, and let you know, Kevin from HubSpot chime in and, and maybe add anything I might have missed as far as you know, where HubSpot is today and, and the approach um, and why you should take on inbound. Sure. Thanks, Chris. I mean, at the end of the day, we are continuing to evolve uh, here at HubSpot, both in the product that we've built and been building since uh, since 2006, but more so in, in what HubSpot can be for any given organization or, or association or business. Uh, it's very important that we not think of, uh, of, of everything as far as to, con uh, excuse me, attract, convert, and sort of close into a, a first time member or a renewing member uh, and more so think of this as a, as a flywheel, right? How this is very cyclical in nature and how every uh, effort that we put forth toward attracting prospective members, uh, how that can actually feed the growth of, of the entire life cycle, the entire journey, uh, all the way through that delight phase that Chris has has touched on here on the slide that we're looking at. So we, we've sort of uh, taken a, a pretty significant pivot or, or iteration in our methodology over the last 18 months, shifting from uh, this idea of a funnel, right? How do we fill the top of the, the funnel, if you're picturing an actual funnel, uh, with prospective members in, in your cases, uh, and really lean into this idea of, of a flywheel where everything, uh, is is sort of reducing the friction and allowing us to uh, to not only attract and convert but close new members delight the overall experience drive renewals and see what that uh, sort of uh, install base or happy member base will do in the way of uh, further attracting other folks to us in the first place so uh, if you that, ever see a, a flywheel graphic from us that's that's sort of the way that our methodology has changed and the product has uh, has followed suit thanks so much kevin and yes I, i'll have um the flywheel image in here a little further on in the, in the presentation and um excellent point so essentially you're saying that 
you know, focusing on, on client satisfaction and, and helping your, not only your, your customers becoming your, help become your best source of new business, your existing customers in the form of, you know, what they're saying about you out there or using their content to help drive, um, drive new referrals or new business, you know, happy customers are, are keeping that wheel spinning as well as, you know, your, your dedication to great service to your, your members in this case. So you've got your marketing, you've got your, you know, your service, and then you've got your happy client kind of making things take on a, a head of steam and, and, and grow your, your business or your organization over time. Yeah, that's accurate. I think it's important that they all, they all feed one another, right? They all need to work together for that to be successful and to get that flywheel really spinning. Uh, and so that's what you can see is the way in, in the way that we have continued to iterate on, uh, on the HubSpot side. Excellent. We'll, uh, we'll be sure just to share that graphic in a little bit, but just real quick, I guess, advertisement on Unleashed Technologies and why you should listen to us uh, and our experience with HubSpot. You know, Unleashed, we have, I think as Chris Jorgensen was saying when he kicked off the webinar, we have over a decade of experience creating, enhancing, and supporting digital experiences for associations. Uh, we've worked with a lot of associations, as you see here, things like National Guard Association, uh, Nat National Electrical Contractors Association, Oncology Nursing Society, uh, really helping them build, enhance, and maintain their web presences over time. And there you have it, with over 40 active association clients, we, we really have a strong sense for uh, what it takes to help associations grow their online presence and, and grow their memberships using the web and, and especially using tools like HubSpot to help uh, foster that growth. As far as our approach, uh, we are definitely different by design. So Unleashed Technologies takes a growth driven approach to building websites or to enhancing customer experiences. We're, we're built on the premise that, you know, your website is never done, nor can you ever stop and sit back and say, you know, we're going to, we're going to be okay with the status quo. We want to help you commit to the continuous improvement of your customer experience. And our course services range from digital strategy, web design, development to inbound marketing. And again, we offer these growth driven flexible client engagements that help you really commit to the continuous improvement of both your website and your customer experience. If you're very familiar with HubSpot and you're familiar with the growth-driven design, that is a that is a an approach that that we love to take here. As I said before, we're HubSpot Silver Partner now, certified partner, and you know, we specialize in open source technologies like Drupal, Magento, WordPress, and Symfony on the web word on the website side of things, but huge fan of HubSpot and working with a lot of associations on HubSpot uh, from the marketing standpoint. Um, just a quick HubSpot growth suite overview and I'll, I'll probably lean on on Kevin to, to kind of wrap these together. Uh, there's Here's the flywheel over here on the right. This is kind of the full breadth of, of HubSpot offering across, across marketing, sales, service and CRM. Now these are, this is a full stack of products that work very powerfully on their own, but even better when you're, you're integrating and working with them together. From an association standpoint, uh, we're finding that a lot of the AMSs out there, association management software, they just can't provide the same level of, uh, whether it be personalization, integration, automation, or, or really the, the maturity that HubSpot has when it comes to engaging members and fostering them through uh, joining and joining the membership or uh, renewals and things like that. But Kevin, if you're going to look at this and, and maybe <laughs> give you a second chance to, to uh, you know, talk through the flywheel and, and how these products fit together, maybe you could give me a nice uh, summation of, of your, your suite of, uh, I guess you call them growth, your growth stack. Yeah, exactly. So, so everything is really centered. Uh, everything in the way of our products, I should say, is is centered around this idea of of CRM. Uh, but really, what this is is it's the it's the the core database that 
any company needs to manage over time. That's perspectives, uh, prospective members, excuse me. Uh, that's existing members, it's customers for other business types. Uh, and so what we want to have are uh, sort of the supporting stacks or the supporting hubs that will ultimately allow a business or an organization to use HubSpot as the full front office solution. Um, now, the uh, so this, uh, to your point, Chris, is, is our growth suite where uh, if you're using every single one of the hubs and the core CRM that, uh, that you'd be fully ingrained with HubSpot, there's some, uh, some incentive in, in being uh, on the growth suite with, uh, with us from a financial perspective. Uh, but the vision of HubSpot too, I think one thing to add here uh, in addition to all the, uh, all the line items is, is that in, in certain industries and in certain verticals, you know, we may not be everything for, for everyone. We may not have an appropriate way to, uh, to replicate an association management system or some other piece of software uh, that, that you're leveraging. Uh, the vision for HubSpot and where we are continuing to, to go, where we are today and, and continuing to go is, is to be that of a, of a true platform. So we're making it easier and easier by the day for other pieces of software, other businesses to plug everything into HubSpot so that this can be the central platform, but it doesn't have to be the end all be all. It's perfectly okay if you have your own sort of way of, uh, of managing uh, member happiness through another system. But ultimately what we want is we want those other systems talking to HubSpot and making it easier for all of you to communicate in an effective way uh, and achieve those growth objectives, whether that is uh, improving your renewal rates with members, improving uh, the, the acquisition numbers uh, month over month, quarter over quarter, right? Uh, that's really where HubSpot is going to sing. Uh, and so a lot of tools, a very wide piece of software now, uh, and, uh, and it, we really allow our, our customers to figure out what do they need, what gaps do they need to fill, what blind spots do they need to clear up, and what system does this have to play nicely with. Excellent. Um, and as you were starting to say, you know, things revolve around the, the CRM, you know, is it required that you use the HubSpot CRM? No, it's not, but if you want to have this, this single view of your membership. Um, it is it's an amazingly powerful tool as we look at a, a glimpse of the CRM and the sales hub here where you can have this centralized place to have all of your, you want to say your marketing or your, your development um, uh, or membership development activity in one place. So it's, you know, knowing, you know, when this, this particular prospective member or this existing member interacted with your website knowing what emails were open, what pieces of content were interacted, what pages on your website were viewed. So this is information that can be, can be shared back into other systems, as Kevin was saying. Uh, it works extremely well when you're using the HubSpot CRM together with, other, with the other hubs, for example, the marketing hub, and we're gonna talk a minute about how marketing automation can really help solve a lot of the problems that that space associations when they are trying to grow their their memberships. You know, the marketing hub is 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 fantastic from the sense of conversion tools. You've got email marketing, SEO content, blogging, etc. One really interesting fact I found with associations is there are some associations out there who might find themselves on a content management system that is hard to use or not user friendly or or even locked down. Uh, you can take the HubSpot Marketing Hub, Kevin, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, and attach it to an existing CMS and take over the control of the content. Is that is that correct, Kevin? Yeah, I mean, we offer plenty of ways for uh, either plugging right into existing websites on separate CMSs, or, or of course we offer our own CMS for folks that want to, uh, to have everything literally under one roof. So uh, there are plenty of options as to how this can, can fit in with an existing web presence without, uh, without much uh, heavy lifting. Excellent, and the and reason I brought that up is we talked to a lot of associations who might have a legacy CMS or they don't have, say, the budget to 
uh, to get onto a new CMS right away. And the, the HubSpot's a way to gain control back of your content and um, combine and also get the benefits of all these other tools, marketing tools that, that you can sit on top of it. So um, really have, have helped rescue some associations out of those situations. Um, and then obviously coordinate central, centralized and trackable campaigns uh, through the system, having email ability, uh, nice centralized reporting. I'm showing you some campaigns that Unleashed Technologies actually has done. Uh, we use HubSpot very uh, religiously here and you know, great landing pages that we've created, downloads, uh, downloading white papers, easy to integrate calls to action, things like that. Um, and then one of the things I really love, and we're gonna we're gonna make this a lot more relevant for the association professionals, is you know how you can use marketing automation and workflows to do things like you know nurture longtime prospects, uh, create new member onboarding communication workflows, maybe nurture member attendance at events, uh, nurturing lapsed members, uh, get notifications when prospects are viewing content, personalized follow up in context of what they viewed. So as we, we talk about some of the challenges that a lot of associations face, whether it's you know short staff or um, lots of diverse types of, of members, you'll find that the, the automation piece here is really tailor-made for a lot of associations and uh, creating these workflows that are going to Again, automate a lot of the, the marketing and communication processes, but also even help you run the association better. I know we have a few association management software, I'm sorry, association management companies on the call today who are looking to help their clients run the association smoother. HubSpot's a way to do that. Um, speaking of which, one of the newest features of HubSpot is the Service Hub, uh, which, which I'd like to ke have Kevin talk a little bit about. Um, as I'm still learning about the Service Hub, it's the newest feature, but you know, one of the things I know about it is, is a way to help you, you know, provide better customer service to, uh, say, your members in this case. A you know, possible benefit here would be you know, a centralized repository for member requests or requests for information or, or tasks that you need to perform in order to better serve your membership. But really would love to hear a little bit from you, Kevin. Um, about what HubSpot's intention was in launching the service hub. Sure, Chris. I mean, at the end of the day, right, as we were talking about before and, and, and why we've pivoted away from the idea of, of the funnel at, uh, exclusively is because the, the story doesn't end when you add a new member to the organization. Uh, the story doesn't end for us when we add a new customer on, on HubSpot. There's still so much work to do to ensure that that customer or that member has a, a positive experience. And so we needed to build something that solved for that part of the process and that part of growth. Uh, for so many organizations, for so many companies, uh, selling into or growing uh, their install base is, uh, is a major part of, of revenue growth and, and uh, overall company growth. So what we've done in, in building the service hub is solved for exactly that. We've built our proprietary tool that is consistent with the rest of the engineering of HubSpot, that is fully integrated and in, uh, all the tools talking with one another that helps to solve for uh, things like tech support tickets or other types of requests to your point, Chris, of, uh, from members uh, maybe members are making certain requests of you or maybe they need to solve for a billing issue or something uh, related to how their member fees were taken out, something like that. Uh, plenty of you, I'm sure, have experienced uh, through some platform needing to use a, a, some sort of ticket creation process. So we, we check that box with Service Hub. We've also created a couple of other tools uh, in here that will allow for uh, customer or member loyalty, member surveying, really capturing uh, information about how our members feel or customers feel about their experience thus far. And then, of course, that data is uh, logged and stored and is uh, very accessible so that uh, an organization an association may be able to do at any point in time, go in and see, well, show me all the members that have been with us for over two years but have given us uh, a less than 
uh, stellar satisfactory score on the most recent survey and then run this campaign to sort of win them back through the marketing automation engine. So that's how you start to get those pieces playing together uh, in a really nice, fluid, efficient way. Uh, and finally, the, the service hub uh, also has what we call a knowledge base. Uh, as Chris was talking about, content is still king. Uh, creating content is absolutely essential in terms of how you get folks to find you. Uh, the knowledge base is a way to give your members or prospective members uh, a self-service approach to understanding the value that you offer or maybe even uh, down to the individual sort of member benefits or how a member should should behave within the association. All of that can live uh, in a knowledge base of sorts that doesn't tie up a support staff or a customer service staff or uh, whatever the other sort of job roles are at, that are post sale or post sign up within your specific associations. It's a way to free up uh, some, uh, some, some manpower, if you will, uh, and let folks find the answers on their own. Ah, oh, very interesting. And that so the knowledge base is 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 essentially storing a lot. I know because I know a lot of these associations are producing. You know, they're gathering data on members. They're they're uh, doing research on industries. They are um, they're amassing large amounts of content. And and uh, it sounds like this is a way to not only you know, host and and contain that content, but provide a um, a modern way for members to get direct access to that content and pull answers from it. Would it be say over the website, perhaps? Could they interact with this content, or is it behind a say a a member protected area? Or how how have, how have people been using the knowledge base so far, Kevin? <laughs> Yeah, most of our customers make it just publicly available to anybody that's accessing the site, similar to the way that HubSpot mm -hmm. does. So if you went mm -hmm. to help.hubspot.com, you'd see so HubSpot's knowledge base. Uh, however, you do have choice in that. If you only wanted to create a knowledge base that was unique or accessible to existing members, there are, are, are gates that you can put up in front of that. Uh, and so it, it definitely solves for the individual member or prospective member, but it's also solving for the association team uh, as well in that if you have members searching this knowledge base for topics or questions or whatever it is and you don't have a piece of content that satisfies that search uh, we're keeping track of that we're letting you know you have a, a way to sort of backfill or create a calendar of what needs to be produced based off of member or, uh, or, or prospect demand so we're solving for both sides of the coin in this particular tool within service hub uh, it's very interesting. Um, and also, I know that a lot of people are taking that same approach to, to SEO nowadays. Like when you think about the content that the association is putting out, either on the website or on the knowledge base, like those questions that are being posed to the membership are probably the same questions that are, people are searching for online that maybe don't even know about the membership so far. So you can take those questions, produce that content. Um, serve your membership and potentially serve prospective members who are searching for that same information. Awesome. Well, I'm going to move on here, Kevin, and talk a little bit about some of the main challenges, uh, how associations can overcome them with HubSpot. And uh, there's this great survey that I, I've gone back to a few times uh, that was done I believe it was in 2000, late 2017, asking over a thousand unique associations, member-driven associations, what are the uh, top three internal challenges to growing your membership association? And and these these were the answers. I wanted to specifically address how how HubSpot could help with some of these challenges. First, being difficulty communicating value or benefits to insufficient staff. Third, membership is too diverse having difficulty meeting the needs of the different segments or difficulty in providing ROI on membership growth efforts and then lastly uh, or the fifth there's a larger list that we could share but the difficulty identifying or contacting members so really looking at at maybe how HubSpot could help through this one like how could HubSpot help with um, when you're having difficulty communicating value to members so these are some of the things that, that I, I put together from 
some of my travels uh, and, and talking with some of our clients, but certainly would love your, your input as well, Kevin. But the root of this problem uh, from, from our perspective is, is definitely data driven. Uh, in understanding, like you know, first and foremost, a tool or or a an ecosystem like HubSpot is going to give you the ability to collect more data on your members and and being able to actually take a better approach to communicating value or benefits. So one of the recommendations would be like stop sending the same kind of blanket message to all prospects, trying to hope that or or all members trying to hope that something sticks. You know, HubSpot, use HubSpot to collect better data on members and then use that data to personalize the member experience. So part of that is is maybe, you know, if, if we're talking about nurturing a new prospective member, understanding where that prospective member is in, in joining in the joining cycle. So it's it's all about being able to deliver the, the right message to the right uh, person at the right time and 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 that is not going to be established with one broad stroke so I think a lot of times when we talk to associations who are who are dealing with this issue it's 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 usually a, a data issue and it, it is usually um, it, it can also stall if they, they may have the data but they don't have the ability to to trigger communications or to to quickly pull insights from that data to be able to act on it. So, um, any anything to add to this here, Kevin? Or when you see someone saying the difficulty communicating value, you know, what what are your thoughts? <laughs> well, I do think that segmentation is key, and and I notice segmentation being another one of the uh, the challenge reasons that you you listed on the previous uh, couple of slides, but. Um, it's all about the relevance and the value that you can convey when when communicating with uh, an individual or with a, a member, an existing member, a prospective member, and and so understanding that that not every individual is going to uh, to sort of define value the same or define relevance the same. If uh, to your point, if you're not segmenting in a very granular way, your your content, your messaging is ultimately going to to miss the mark. Um, the other piece here is is being sure that any communication is done in a very timely fashion. Uh, and again, that can't that's not uh, a blanket timeline for every existing uh, member or prospective member or or even a segment that you've you've carved out within those those two buckets. Uh, so finding ways to automatically send that relevant and valuable content based on when the individual wants to receive it or is asking for it if it's not timely you're you're uh you know shooting yourselves in the, in, in the foot in a way so finding a way to to understand what are the timing triggers and how to get that uh communication in front of folks when they demand it uh is uh, incredibly important excellent um and i think you'll you'll find that some of these these top five challenges that we've identified there's, there's there's some overlap between them there's a lot of overlap between them and some of them stem from the others and, and you'll see here in a moment that we'll go a little deeper into the into the segment segmenting piece of it but the the next one was you know insufficient staff so so here's you know, where i was thinking like automation is is, is really going to help uh, an organization and and tools like hubspot or the the the, the suite of of software that you can integrate with HubSpot is really going to make it possible for your association, for your organization to do a lot more without necessarily needing a huge staff. Um, and and being able to automate wherever possible, whether it's, it's marketing or it is um, process related and management tasks through either the CRM or through the, the new service hub, some of the examples around automation that might help with uh, making up for that lack of, of people or, or hands on board to do the work of the onboarding process. So one of the things we've learned from working with associations is that the retention of members, the onboarding process is so critical to retention, um, getting a new member introduced to the organization and off on the right what is so important. So if you have a well-defined process for onboarding, 
you can have that ingrained in, in your onboarding communications or the tasks that you are managing through a system like HubSpot or perhaps even integrating with, with your association management software. But, but as it relates to auto marketing automation for communications, um, the, the, the things that you're regularly going to hear are, are you know, nurturing prospective members into joining. And again, not taking that same broad spoke stroke to every prospective member. You have the ability to automate and create sequences of emails or communications within a HubSpot tool that is different for those different segments. So, uh, you know, allowing you to, to learn what works create them, automate that process, and create a, a repeatable process wherever possible. And then, you know, things like getting in front of attrition. So Kevin could probably talk a lot about, um, uh, I'm sorry, lead scoring, um, and how that could help potentially help an association understand uh, whether a, a potential, someone is a good prospect to be a potential member of your organization or also uh, someone is at risk of, of leaving or not um, renewing with your organization. Could you talk a little bit, Kevin, about predictive lead scoring uh, as it relates to associations here? Sure. Uh, so so predictive lead scoring or, or even uh, any lead scoring for that matter, any lead scoring model, excuse me, uh, is tremendously valuable to uh, organizations, associations that are are trying to understand who, you know, what's the profile of the type of member that that we want to go out and uh, and, and and find us or that we want to find. Uh, so there there's a, an approach to take of, you know, understanding who are the best types of members for us, who are those that create more value uh, for us as a as an association. And how do we effectively uh, market to those folks? How do we? How are we uh, putting ourselves out there to be found by those folks? Uh, and then, of course, on the uh, existing member front, uh, being able to understand uh, again who fits that profile, who is showing the right behaviors, and then understanding what those behaviors mean to the likelihood of uh, a renewed membership. Uh, and if we identify some of the behaviors that uh, might indicate a, a churned membership, a canceled membership, what can we do to get out ahead of that three, four, five, six months in advance of, uh, of a membership renewal? How do we ensure uh, that we can, can steer that ship in the right direction, if you will, to improve our retention numbers, our renewal numbers uh, within our member base? That, that's actually a really <laughs> much better said and, and, you know, kind of backing up for a moment, like how did we get to you know, lead scoring, when we're talking about insufficient staff, you're thinking about like how, how you would go about doing this um, if you didn't have such, uh, such um, tools or, or automation in place. So now you're able to uh, gauge and, and set um, these specific parameters around what, what constitutes a good prospective member and what constitutes an at, an at risk member and trigger alerts to you and your organization to to in, engage and communicate with them accordingly so it's really really powerful stuff and and people who incorporate this into their marketing into their communications um you know you've got this 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 smart engine working on your behalf helping you uh increase membership and increase retention so really really exciting uh Next, we wanted to, uh, this was the one, you know, getting to segmentation, you know, the obvious answer here, meeting the needs of a di diverse membership. You know, the problem was, you know, how do I meet the needs of these, we've got a lot of different types of members and, and we only, and maybe we do have that short staff and we have a problem communicating to them all. So here's your chance to do uh, granular segmentation, uh, work with smart lists and personalization. And I'm, I'm gonna let Kevin talk over this slide because this is where I think um, some of the best value for an association can be taken away. And you've covered a lot, of, a little bit of this already. Sorry, it was muted, Chris. Um, yeah, so I mean, HubSpot is, again, going back to, to relevance and, and, and to value, segmentation is, is the key to all of that. So, um, you know, we've, 
we've incorporated a number of pieces or, or tools within the platform that to, to make segmentation easier, uh, com combining the demographic information, the, the contact profile and, and other pieces or, or criteria, and also the behavioral information to build very uh, automated uh, segmentation and, and lists, which we call smart lists here. Um, in a way to make it easier on the actual users of our software, uh, you, know, you and your teams, to uh, to pull these cohorts together to communicate with them in the ways that they want to be communicated with most. Uh, and so between this idea of dynamic uh, list creation and dynamic list editing, where the manual effort is removed and the personalization component of what we call dynamic content or smart content, uh, actual blocks of content in uh, in emails or on pages that will speak to the individual like they want to be spoken to in a very relevant way, um, just based on rules that you've put in place. It's allowing our customer base associations and, and uh, companies within different verticals, of course, the ability uh, to communicate and have much better performance statistics around how their content is being absorbed and what the, uh, the, the improvement is as far as follow through and follow up and, and achieving the growth goals that they've actually set. So uh, the idea of segmentation and personalization is, uh, is incredibly important to, to our customer base and of course to the, to the products that we're building. Great, and when we're talking about personalization, Kevin, this could be, like you were saying, personalized content on the website, uh, being powered by HubSpot, uh, personalized content, emails, uh, even in in the uh, chat bots, which you can also access the conversational marketing through HubSpot. So, number one, identifying who's on the other side, what what segment they fall into, and then having some some kind of pre-populated, pre-formatted content that you is more likely to resonate with them. Um, so just really, I know this is a really important and um, critical topic being discussed in the association space. I'm not sure that everyone is aware of the level of uh, capabilities that existed in HubSpot to do these types of things. So uh, moving on, and um, I'm sorry, the, the, the next challenge was difficulty proving ROI on member growth efforts. So, I think this is kind of a, we definitely covered a lot of this, but just sticking with the format and, and understanding that, you know, when you pull a tool like HubSpot together, you are, um, you can't measure what you do not track. You're creating a, a place to pretty much track all of your efforts and, 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 and automate the process of tracking it. Um, you know, if you were using the full suite of HubSpot growth, you know, everyone's trying to get to that single 360 degree view of the customer or the member, uh, you know, a centralized place of marketing and sales data where, where you're collaborating around the, um, the marketing communications and the, the actual maybe um, the, the member renewing or uh, donations being uh, given to the, to the uh, association or, or events. So, so what marketing activities are directly responsible for driving growth of the organization, connecting those dots through great, um, beautiful customer reports that you can build and export uh, from HubSpot. Uh, again, you can really, uh, it, this is built to <laughs> allow you to share this information and, and demonstrate ROI uh, and really know what content, emails, segments, et cetera, are are most responsible for your return on investment. And then also maybe even allowing you to, you know, do less um, with more, but not investing in as much paid advertising per se, where you're using your content to engage and, and you can measure the efforts of those, um, those more, those content driven approaches. So didn't want to spend too much time on there as we're um, definitely wanted to leave time for questions. The, the other one was difficulty identifying and contacting members. Here's where, yeah, I think we've covered this a lot, but I wanted to put in some, a little bit about HubSpot Connect. And, and this is where Kevin was talk, talking earlier about this, this ecosystem, uh, open ecosystem that HubSpot is creating, not only free to leverage 
HubSpot tools, but this, this open API to pull in whether it's other tools or other platforms where your members might be frequenting. So, um, you know, if you say we are having difficulty identifying or contacting members, talking with an association executive director recently who said that, you know, my organization has its own Slack group um, that, I'm sorry, that our, our members are out there and they, they communicate in a forum on Slack and we're really trying to pull that conversation into uh, into our um, our member portal and we're like, well, you know, you're you're kind of swimming against the stream here. What if you could pull that content into your um, into your 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 ecosystem? As far as, for example, if they were using something like HubSpot, they're having Slack um, channel feed right in, and that particular member, you could see their Slack communications in their profile in HubSpot. So this is the kind of the vision of something like HubSpot Connect. I had included a couple of other tools that that can be integrated into HubSpot that are going to make it easier for you to uh, contact your members and and um, engage with them better. For example, one of them is a really cool tool that I heard about from a, from a client, uh, Seven Sense, which is an an email optimization tool which has a a full integration with HubSpot, which actually tells you when is the optimal time to send an email to a person? And I'm not talking about in general, I'm talking about it will run analysis on your entire HubSpot instance and tell you on a personal level, like what Chris and Unleash Technology, when he is most likely to open your email. Another example of this is, is Drift, which is, takes um, chatbots and personalization to a different level uh, using odd, uh, artificial intelligence to uh, to help with conversational marketing. So, so by, you know, engaging and, and, and working with, with HubSpot Connect um, or with HubSpot, HubSpot has now opened up this already powerful tool to pull in those, those other things like, like SurveyMonkey, Survey Monkey, for example. So you can take the data or the, the intelligence that these other platforms are are providing you with and, and integrate them into um, into your HubSpot uh, central uh, database. Anything else you'd add there, Kevin? I mean, the the reality is is that there are thousands and thousands of uh, of, of software, different software that you may uh, each of you may be be using, or some of you may be using a, a one set and, and others using a completely different set. Uh, Scott Brinker is our vice president of platform here at HubSpot, but he's also long been uh, a thought leader in the in the Marcom tech space, and he's done a tremendous amount of work in profiling all the different solutions uh, that are that are out there. And our job at HubSpot is is really to make it. And continue to make it easier and easier for these other systems to plug into HubSpot so that we can be the centerpiece, but uh, you can continue to use these other uh, complementary systems that may not go away. And so it's it's our vision, it's our purpose to continue to make that process simpler for our customers and our, uh, our, our prospective customers, those folks that might consider using us uh, at all levels of our product. So uh, there is a Connect database now that Chris has screenshotted here on this uh, on this slide, but uh, this will continue to grow uh, week by week, uh, and, and so it's a it's a very important part to the uh, the HubSpot vision. And, and and you might see something pop up there that doesn't exist um, on there on there today as as early as next week or or maybe next month. So uh, a lot of work for us to continue to do here, but uh, we've got a good start. Awesome. Well. That includes that concludes the the presentation portion of this. We have about ten minutes left here, and and um, I wanted to invite my colleague Chris Jorgensen back in. I know um, we had some questions, and uh, you'd love to to answer them, or, or if people have questions for Kevin, um, you know, fire away. Are you there, Chris? Yep. Thanks, Chris. So our first question. Uh, this is probably for Kevin comes from Mike and he asks, to support integration with an AMS, my past experience with HubSpot was that it uses an email address as a customer key. When a member changes organizations and email addresses, most associations don't want to lose data about that individual. 
Does HubSpot now support storing a unique customer ID to facilitate better integration? So honestly, I have to, I'd have to check with uh, a couple of my uh, more technical folks to answer that directly. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm, I'm sure that we can get an answer back to you, Mike. Uh, the, the one thing that you, you can absolutely do, especially if you have control over uh, sort of m manipulating or maintaining the data uh, inside of HubSpot yourselves, is of course a contact record merge. Uh, there's no issue whatsoever in doing that. It's just a manual process, so you, that's not exactly scalable. And so I think what you're uh, you're looking for is a more scalable way that doesn't require the one single uh, unique email address to for deduplication. So I'm happy to hunt down an answer for that and and uh, and, and shoot it back to you or one of the Chris's will. Yeah, we'll we'll make the deck available. We'll make the deck available to the to the attendees, and then we'll. We'll include, uh, we'll include Kevin's answer there. Awesome. We have a few more uh, questions in the queue here. And if you do want to submit a question, just feel free to use it, the GoToWebinar uh, functionality. So our next question comes from Scott. And he says, for our association, event microsites are, all, microsites are always a challenge. Is this something HubSpot could help us with? So the answer is probably, uh, and without having a complete definition of what a microsite is in your mind or what it looks like in your in your mind's eye, um, I hesitate to say absolutely. But between what uh, Unleashed is able to do on the development side, or or what our tools are able to do at the individual uh, landing page and uh, and website page level, there's a high probability that uh, that we'll be able to solve for uh, exactly that building microsites for specific use cases or uh, finite periods of time a lot of different ways to go about that so i think it you know to give you a definitive answer it's hard to say without exactly knowing what you're envisioning but um but i can say pretty confidently that uh, uh it's probable that the combination of unleashed and, and hubspot could uh could tackle that no problem yeah, Kevin, I'd, I'd agree. Um, we have we're often called upon to build um, microsite templates, which are re reusable templates um, in whether it's in HubSpot or or other CMSs, where you can then um, essentially change out the look and the feel and the content based on that new event um, and have it directly tied into to HubSpot, for example. So. Yeah, that's something we, we, we see pretty frequently, but I, I do also agree with you that, um, you know, we would need a little more insight as to the requirements of, for those microsites. It, it Can it be something that's templated and, and reusable? So, um, great question. Thanks, guys. Our next question comes from Frank, and he wants to know, he says, uh, personalization is certainly a buzzword that our team here is hearing a lot. How can HubSpot help my association tackle personalization at a basic level? So it very much starts with data collection. So one of the, the cornerstones of the HubSpot product is, uh, is the tracking code, the JavaScript that lives on your, on your website. Um, and to start personalization or personalizing content or parts of your marketing strategy, uh, it's essential that you start capturing in, in information at an individual level. So using something like HubSpot, uh, you're going to be able to uh, identify the folks that are hitting your website or you've got a, uh, a member database already. Uh, so with what you have and what you're starting from, uh, HubSpot has a handful of different places where uh, you can create what we call personalization tags that correspond to individual contact properties. So first name and last name, those are two contact properties that you probably have for all of your members. Uh, what you could do is create personalization tags, uh, very similarly to how you've received plenty of emails with your first name in the subject line. I don't think that's a foreign concept to anybody here. Uh, so what we've done is sort of taken that approach and extrapolated that out to multiple products so that uh, if I come back to your website, I'm a member of yours, you know it's me, you're tracking me through the tracking code. I come back to the website, I hit the home page, or I hit a specialty page, and you have a personalization tag for my first name in one of the uh, the headlines or the header tags 
on the actual website page. So it's coded in to the website to read as my first name when Kevin's on the website, and it would show as Chris's first name if uh, if one of the Chris's was, was on the website. So those tags can be incorporated into website pages, into blog posts, into emails, into live chat and, uh, and, and conversational marketing modules. So anything that ultimately is public facing and is an asset that's built using the HubSpot tools, uh, most of them will have that option for personalization tags that you can begin incorporating into your strategy very easily. And it's, uh, it's very lightweight. It doesn't really require uh, a lot of development work to get that layered in there. And maybe one item to add there, I mean, everyone knows um, you're using an example that everyone can understand or has an experience as far as with the first name, but for the case of an association that has a diverse member set, um, you can show blocks of content that could, that would appeal more to those different segments as opposed to just kind of that, that, that example of, of, you know, hello, Chris, right? You were as opposed to delivering someone to content that is, they're, they're more likely to engage with, or they're more likely to inter interact with. But, you know, great answer, great question. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Looks like our last question we're gonna be able to get to today comes from Mark, and he says, we are considering various chatbot options. What makes HubSpot unique? Well, I'd, I'd start by saying that you know, HubSpot is is taking conversational marketing and chatbots very seriously. Uh, you know, if you look at our product as a whole, there's there's still a lot of work to uh, to to put in, but it's at a great place right now. And in the same vein of of the true value prop of of HubSpot as a whole, where all the tools are talking with one another. Uh, the idea that all these lists and all these segments and all the, the history of, of these individuals is living in this environment and then can be layered into the actual chat bots and the messaging uh, really starts to set it apart uh, to give a very uh, tailored experience how you're sending it uh, or displaying messages to certain folks and when based on all the other information that's living in HubSpot is uh, is one of those things and then when you think about the the way that it's actually being built a consistent interface the you know the same way that you build a marketing automation sequence is uh or workflow in hubspot is is the same way that you would build a, a chatbot in hubspot so uh consistency ease of use uh that's you know those are uh characteristics of the of the product across the board uh and so you know we start to set ourselves apart there uh, by taking something that by nature is pretty complex uh, and, and really making it simple for the actual users of our platform. Right, and I think uh, one of the keys, and you may hit upon this, is that it's, you know, it's embedded in that platform. It's, it's not something you, you have to plug in if you're already using HubSpot. Um, it's a native uh, conversational tool and, and chatbot, which uh, we've used here at, at Unleashed. But, um, just want to thank everyone um, wrapping up here and uh, Kevin really appreciate you joining us here today uh, appreciate the partnership with with HubSpot um, and, and all the great insight you've been able to provide here wanted to also just throw out there if anyone had any other questions that they wanted to email us they can send those to start at unleash technologies unleash dash technologies.com which we have up on the screen right here as well, um, we're making an offer if, if you uh, would like to see a customized, tailored plan on how your association could leverage HubSpot and maybe fit into your existing ecosystem, complement what you're already doing, uh, we will do that uh, free of charge here at Unleashed. And then lastly, if you're already using HubSpot and you'd like us to perform an audit to help see how you could perhaps maximize it or, or uh, better use uh, the system, uh, we will perform a free hot audit for existing HubSpot users as well. But uh, again, email us at start at unleash-technologies.com. And thanks so much for sticking with us. Everyone have a fantastic day.